an infected person, an infected animal, objects, contaminated foods, contaminated soil, contaminated water. Okay? And the reason, and let, we'll, we'll skip because we, got, we know we can transfer infections from person to person. We know that if, if, if I have the flu and I talk in your face or breathe in your face, there's a possibility that you could have the flu, right? So we got that. Infected animals, um, yeah, we can transfer uh, uh, through dog bites, uh, raccoons, um, all those things. They transfer uh, rabies and all those kind of things through, through that. Bats, they say that coronavirus originally originated through a bat. I don't know. They have these, they have these things in other countries called um, wet markets. And wet markets is where they have, um, you've seen them maybe on, on shows or on the movies or on, even on the documentary where the animals are laid out on, the, on, the, on display for people to buy and they may be smoked or they may have a live animal in a cage or something for people to buy and they eat it, right? Chicken, um, you know, they have all kinds of things, you know. It's just a market where live animals are. But there, some of them are dead, but they've been smoked and they're sitting out. Um, we may watch something on that. Um, but they're called wet markets. And what they're trying to do is they're trying to ban wet markets or control wet markets all over the world because they think that these diseases are coming from these wet markets and these animals. Okay? And uh, we used to have a pandemic of disease every 50 years. Now they're anticipating we're going to have it every 15 years. So there's a pandemic going to come every 15 years from some disease, okay? That's remarkable that it's going to move up that many years. 35, 35 years, you know, you, you, I mean, you got to think the last pandemic we had was what? Um, not even bubonic plague. It was, um, mm -hmm, I think it was during the Depression. We had some kind of Spanish flu, sure was. Spanish flu, very good. Yep, Spanish flu was the last one we had. You know, that's, I mean, that's a long time ago. But now they're talking about, we having this in 2020, we're going to have another one in 2035? I don't know. That's a lot. That's a lot to deal with. You know, that's a lot to deal with. You know. Um, contaminated food. Uh, contaminated objects, of course, you know. Sipping out people's straws, that's a contaminated object. Okay. Uh, contaminated food. Um, we're very fortunate in this area of the world that we're able to cook our food and kind of decontaminate it and that kind of thing as much as we can. Other people in other parts of the world, they're not so lucky. They don't have that. They don't have fire and, and sometimes hot water and those type of things to, 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 to con de decontaminate the food. Okay? Contaminated soil. Contaminated soil is going to fuel contaminated food. Contaminated soil is going to fuel contaminated food. Contaminated water. There's been, if you ever noticed, there's a big push on, in, in other countries to get clean running water. They have it filtered. It's because that water is contaminated. That water brings in protozoans into the body. You have to drink water. So if i got to drink water, there's other animals out here who drink water that the cows are in the, the pond and they go down and drink the water, but their stomach has a certain acid that kills those type of protozoans and viruses that come into the body. We unfortunately don't have that, okay? So um, drinking water, um, I think that bottled water is contaminated. Anything that touched by man is typically contaminated and you can, it's just, can, it's just an undetectable level of contamination. So it's an undetectable level that doesn't bother you even then it comes out of the sink. There's a certain contamination of water that comes out of the sink, but you, it's just a level that, that we can live with, okay? Um, so that's just kind of the way it goes. Pathogens can then enter the body through breaks in skin and through the moist linings of eyes, ears, nose, mouth, and other openings, okay? So pathogens can enter through the body in breaks of skin. It can also enter through your nails, you ever seen people with um, their toenails will be brittle or they'll be dark? You ever seen them like it up? What's happened is they've gotten 
a fungus from somewhere. You can get it from carpet. You can get it from the shower. But what happens is there's a little tiny crack that's in your nail. And unfortunately, th that fungus gets in that crack. And once it gets in that crack, it has what? Warm area, moist area, and a dark area to grow. So it grows. That's what it destroys the toenails. Okay? Now, you can get rid of it. There's some, uh, there's some uh, um, medication that you can take. Um, the only thing is it has um, some kind of uh, effect on, I think it's the liver. So you have to have um, your liver tested um, maybe shortly after you start taking it if you have some problems. Okay? All right. We good? You guys sure are quiet today. You're quiet every day, so I don't know what I'm saying. All right. Infected people. Many infectious diseases are spread through some form of contact with a person who has, a, has the disease. Okay? Shaking hands. Okay? When you shake hands with people, you got to wash your hands. But it's very easy to, um, to um, shoot. You had a basketball game, Miller. You had a basketball game. You, you high-fiving. You go to the locker room. They got Snickers or, or, or chips or something. You try, you at home game. You got some chips in there. You trying to eat them real fast while the coach is talking or behind them. You, you took the germ from, the, from one player and transferred it to your hand, got it, and ate it. There it goes. It's very easy to do, guys. That's why the body is working 24-7 fighting off viruses and, and fungi and bacteria. It works. 20, your immune system works 24-7. That's why it's so important to keep yourself healthy. Exercise, you know, take you some emergency or some kind of airborne every once in a while or eat um, oranges or something that brings up your vitamin C. Just protect yourself, okay? All right. The contact may be direct, but be, contact may be direct physical contact. Um, infectious diseases can also spread through indirect contact, okay? Indirect contact. Indirect contact would mean I sneeze or I'm talking, and regardless of when you're talking, it doesn't matter if it's small or big, you have some type of discharge from your mouth. There's going to be some kind of spit. It may be a big particle. It may be a small particle. But if I'm talking right here, and I'm talking, I'm talking, I'm talking, and the particles are falling on the desk, and somebody comes in and says, good morning, Ms. D, what you doing? Then they go do what? Eat those chips? Give them some of that candy. Get, get some of that candy. What's those little, those little twisty things y'all like to eat? The sour, got the sugar on them? I don't know what they are, but they're long like this. Sour patches, yeah, the little twisters, whatever those are. I see people, kids eating those. Yeah, sweet tart ropes. Is that what it is? Something like that. Anyway, I see kids in the hallway eating them. Like, Give me one of those. And they get one. But your hand's been on this desk. But when you left that day, you didn't, you didn't remember to, to, to get your hand sanitizer, squirt a couple times before you leave. So now your buddy's out there. You grab it. You put it in your mouth and you eat it. There you go. Okay? It's real easy. All right. Infected animals. Some infectious diseases are transmitted to humans through uh, the bites of animals. Um, raccoons, um, they eat everything. They eat through trash. They eat through everything. So those, and a raccoon can transfer if he bites you, which you got to put him in a real bad situation for a raccoon to bite you. Okay, you got to corner him, and he ain't got no choice but to bite you. If you see him, he, now if it's a big trash and it's a lot of food in it, he ain't going to run off. He going to sit there and look at you like, when you tell him to go, he going to turn around and look, and he going to go back to business. But if it's something he can do without, he'll go. Most of the time, they'll tell, I've seen a raccoon take his food to the creek, and he washed it off and then ate it. But it might have been something that had been sitting in the trash for three, four days. If it was, you know, so it might not have been, it might have had some kind of disease to it. Okay? All right. They say coronavirus is what? Through bats. Who ate a bat? I don't know. <laughs> I might have ate one. You know, go to, you know, go to some of these restaurants. You don't know what you're eating. Okay? I really encourage people to grow as much food as you can. Learn how to grow your tomatoes in a pot. If you live in an apartment, you can have your pots out in the, 
you know, out on the patio or whatever, you can grow your tomatoes. You can grow, um, uh, what is it? You can grow your, um, you can grow your uh, okra. You can grow, you're not going to be able to grow big things like corn or anything like that because the nutrients, corn needs so many nutrients from the soil, you can't grow corn enough. But small stuff, you know, anything that's, anything that's leafy, anything like that, grow it. Grow it. So if you grow it, then, then you don't have to worry about is it contaminated or not. You know, you might not be able to grow your, you know, your fish. You know, if you can get your fish from a fish farm, most of the time, if it's farm-raised fish, most of the time it was raised in a controlled environment. It might not be totally controlled, but it's much better than you catching it out of Joe Pool Lake. Don't get me wrong. I've eaten fish out of Joe Pool Lake. I've eaten fish out of Lake Texoma is where I'm from. I've eaten fish out of there all, all my life. So don't get me wrong. I'm not shunning. I'm saying if you just want to avoid some of these potential hazards you know, on your body, you might want to try that. Um, it's just the way it goes. All right, contaminated objects. Okay, these pathogens can spread from person to person. Doorknobs, eating utensils, towels, needles being used for body piercing and tattoos. If you got that stuff, you got to make sure those people are clean. You know, don't be going to little Nick Nick house talking about Nick 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 going to put this tattoo on me. Okay, you're going to set up infection. You're going to lose your arm behind that. Okay, so it's um you know it's 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 a it's a process, all right. Contaminated food, soil, and water. Some pathogens are naturally present in food and soil. Okay. Sometimes water and food become contaminated with pathogens from infected infected people. Okay, like I said, you got somebody that's infected. Um, somebody say for instance, you go by what's the last fast food place you've eaten, Miller? Or, or what's the last fast food place you eat? Chick-fil-A. Okay. I'm going I'm to cook a Chick-fil-A, hypothetically. I'm going to cook a Chick-fil-A. I feel a little sick, but I need my job. I got to pay the rent. So what I do? Go to work. I don't tell anybody, right? It's noontime in Cedar Hill. At Chick-fil-A, the line is, no, oh, no, we'll say, it's noontime in Cedar Hill on Saturday at Chick-fil-A. That line is around the block out on, the, out on Beltline, right? So I can't stop because I'm trying to get this chicken out. I sneeze. I can't stop. So now what did I do? Got it on the chicken. Miller just came in and bought that. Regains, you just came in and bought that chicken. There you go. Okay, so grow as much as you can. Be mindful of food. Okay. Here's your vocabulary: infectious disease, microorganisms, pathogens, bacteria, toxin, virus. Okay, fungi, protozoan. Okay, that's the end of that. All right, I will put your project up here in just a second. Remember, you're going to use this um, PowerPoint, use some of the things off of the PowerPoint to talk about, but you're going to have to research your project and get that done, okay, for the end of the week. All right, good? All right.